Want to make this penguin plushie? I'm going to take you through it step by step. I'm going to show you how to make this little penguin plushie. But hey, if you're new here, I'm Emma from Studio 77. I create new tutorials every week. So please hit that big red subscribe button and the bell to be notified so that you don't miss a thing. Lots of my tutorials have free patterns too and all the links are in the description below. And today's tutorial is also a collaboration with my good friend Sarah over at Red Rocking Bird please do head over, there's a link in the description below, give her a like and see her amazing tutorials. I mean, check out this really cute penguin tutorial that she's got on her channel right now. I'm gonna post the link in the description below. Do head over and give her video a like and subscribe to her channel. She has some amazing tutorials coming up as well. But today, I'm, as I say, I'm gonna show you this penguin. It's a really nice evening project. Don't forget to stay to the end so that you can see a sneaky peek of what's going to be up on next week's tutorial. If you love this guy, you're going to love him too. Oh, and if you love my content, please do hit that red subscribe button and the bell to be notified. And if at any point you're loving this video, give a big thumbs up as it really helps my video. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to download the free pattern, which is in the link in the description below. Then you need to cut out all the pieces and you need to attach the two pieces of the scarf together just with a bit of tape just to make the long length that you're going to need. To mark on my fleece I use either a friction pen or a white gel pen on the black just so that it's easier to see. And for the fleece you're going to need white, black, yellow and you're going to need a patterned piece for the hat and the scarf. Now this could be any kind of knitted or stretch fabric it could even be an old jumper. So once you've cut out all the pieces, we're then going to cut them out of the fabric. On the pattern that you're going to download, it's going to say on each piece what colour you need to cut and how many of each piece. This is my working pattern, so it doesn't have all that information on there, but it will do on your pattern when you download it. Now, depending on the type of fleece you've got and where you've got it up from, just make sure that you're using it on the right side. And there's also a kind of grain of the fabric as well. I've noticed on my one that the grain is going down and a way to see that is when you rub your hand against it, if it makes a different colour in the fleece, I don't know if you can see that, then that's the wrong way. It's almost like a fur pile and my weight is going down that way. So it's important that you place all of your pattern pieces going in the right direction, going down the creature's body. Another thing to note as well is that all of my patterns for the penguin or the pattern pieces don't have seam allowance. So you need to allow that when you're cutting it out. I just find it's easier to follow the line of the pen rather than do the guesswork. And you're obviously going to mark your pattern pieces on the reverse of the fabric. And when you're marking out your pieces as well, you want to transfer all your marks. Now, as I say, this pattern that I'm using on the camera is not the correct pattern that you're going to find. And on your pattern, it will have what all these marks mean. But I know that that is where my gusset needs to be stitched to. So I'm just gonna mark that on my seam allowance line. So I've marked where the flippers need to be stitched to and the gusset as well. And the marks for the feet. I don't need to mark that inner piece there. We can work that out when we come to it. When it comes to the flippers, I'm just going to mark around left and right around one of each and then the back piece, I will just have a big enough piece, but I don't need to mark it out. You'll see what I mean when it comes to stitching those pieces up.
So when it comes to the face, just going to check again the direction of the pile. So it's going down. And then we just need to make sure that we cut exactly to this piece with no seam allowance. And I don't need to mark the beak and the eyes on and the cheek yet because we're going to mark those on the other side. And I go across with the rotary cutter and then I'm going to snip in with my scissors just to make sure I get that point really nice and symmetrical. And this fleece that I'm using here is a blanket actually that I'm using for the yellow. When I originally bought it, I made it for a, I used it for a project and I could not find yellow fleece for some reason. So I ended up buying a blanket, which is quite a good way to source colors if you can't find them online. And I'm cutting this one out in a, double layer and then I can just use that in a similar way to how I'm going to do the flippers. I can just sew that directly together. Just marked it out on the one side. There's the flippers. And then you've got the little nose and I'm just going to, where I've cut that out of this other piece, other pattern piece, I'm just going to trace that through for my beak. Sometimes it's quite good to dot with the friction pen. Sometimes it works a bit easier, especially when it gets all fluffed up from the fleece. <laughs> need to keep that somewhere safe because it's so small. <laughs> and then for the little cheeks, the little rosy cheeks, you just need to use a pale pink or peach fleece or felt. I'm using felt just because I didn't have a piece of fleece and often you have to buy fleece in quite large quantities. You can also make the whole penguin out of felt as well if you want to. Or there's some really nice plush fabrics. A really good place to get plush fabric from is Plush Addict in the UK. So you can try that. I'll put a link down to some of their lovely Shannon fabrics as well. So once we've got all our pieces cut out, the first thing we're going to do is to sew the front white piece to the front black piece. And to do that, we're just going to turn it over, place that guide on, and pin it into place. So I've stitched around the outside of that white edge and I'm just going to mark now and pin for the cheeks, the beak and the eyes. So I've sewn around the edge of the cheeks and the beak and you may notice as the, it looks kind of a bit dirty that's just from the pen from the other side so I'm going to hair dryer that off in a minute and that will go. Um, one thing I wanted to note as well about when I'm doing the, my embroidery I always use the same for the top thread and the bottom thread so that then if any of the bottom thread does pull through it doesn't really matter because it's the same colour. If you use the 
like a black, which you would normally do in regular sewing, so that it looks nice on the inside, like for garments and dresses and things, it may pull through and you might get the black showing. So that's a bit of a tip when it comes to the embroidery. Also, if you're not competent on the machine or you don't feel confident doing that, you can also, of course, hand sew that or even glue gun it on. It's, it's no biggie. So I'm gonna add my plush eyes now. And you can get these from Amazon or um, fabric shop suppliers, haberdashery suppliers and eBay, anywhere really. They're just plush safety eyes. And they usually come as a set. I'm gonna use the, we can use a second from the smallest. So I'm just gonna make a hole. And then you just poke it through the hole and put the safety on the back. Now I'm just going to go and hair dryer that nose off to get rid of the pen. Next thing I'm going to do is to sew the flipper pieces together, one left, one right, and the feet. And I'm just going to sew around these edges, leave these open. Same on the feet, leave these open. So I've sewn up the flippers and the feet and I'm just going to cut off the excess now, the excess seam allowance, so that it's about three millimetres from the edge, or about a quarter of an inch, just under, maybe eighth of an inch. And I should also note as well that when I sew them, I sew kind of up to the edge of the seam allowance on the opening, just to be sure, because we know that we're going to stitch it in like that, but in case there's any difference, there's a bit of wiggle room, or a bit of leeway on that one. And then we want to turn them the right way out. And you might need to use a pair of scissors or if you've got a bone folder, you can use that as well. Just get that point of the flipper out. As you can see, I'm struggling a bit with the feet and I'm just using the scissors to, you can be fairly fishy with it, but I would never do this with a, a finer or more fragile fabric, even a cotton. I would be a bit wary of kind of pushing it around so much, but with the fleece, it's not too bad because it, it gives a lot more and you're unlikely to cut a hole in it. You could use a pin as well to push them out. And I do find that when I've sewn the feet, I find that there is a natural left and a right. Not always, but sometimes. So you just want to choose which one you prefer. I quite like the big toe, if there is a big toe, going in to the inside. So I'm just going to bear that in mind when I sew it into the penguin. So we've got our flippers and we've got our feet and now we need to start sewing up the main body of the penguin. So we've got our front that we made earlier and we're just going to place the back to the front and we're going to mark up our markings. Oh, 
or notches. And we want to leave open a gap at the top. So I'm just going to put pins to mark that as well. And this will be marked on your pattern too. So you just need to mark with pins where those notches are on your pattern. And then we need to pin in our gusset. And we need to make sure that when we do that, we put the feet in and we put the feet and the flippers so that they're closest to the front, not the back. So you have the front, the feet and the flippers, and then you have the gusset, and then you have the back. It's really important because otherwise you'll end up with the feet on the back coming out of the seam. So you want to place them in according to the pattern lines where they're marked and they're going to be facing up. So again, make sure that the big toe, if you've ended up with one, um, goes in towards the middle, like so. And we're just gonna pin that in place to the front, just to the front, not to the back, not all the way through both pieces. Before we put the flippers in, we just need to put a little bit of stuffing inside. Then I'm going to pin them to the front piece, again like the feet, marking up the notches. Then I'm going to add the gusset and I'm just going to mark up the notches at the bottom and the centre front. And the centre back. and the end notches on the side. It can be a bit tricky when it gets to the front side just because you've got a lot of bulk in those seams there with the flippers. Pin it best you can and you can take out the pins if you do them going along the seam as you stitch it or you could even tack it before you sew it as well or if you're hand sewing it then you haven't got so much of an issue because you can stitch it as you go pin it as you go When it comes to sewing the penguin up, you want to be careful that you do it in the right way because the bulk in the flipper area is really quite hard to get through the machine. So you want to start at the top because you're leaving that opening for bagging out and stuffing. You want to start at the top and finish just where the gusset starts. Then you want to take it out of the machine, 
make sure that that back is pushed to the back and obviously you've got pins and things in it as well. You could tuck it, which might make it easier. You haven't got the worry about the pins, but I'd still sew it in this way. So you start at the top, finish at the top of the gusset, take the work out, then you stitch all the way around that front section to the gusset, all the way around to the next bit, take it out and go again from the top of the gusset to the top of where you're gonna finish stitching. And then once you've done that, you do the same on the back from the top of the gusset all the way around the back to the other top of the or the other end of the gusset and then it's time to turn your penguin out the right way and we're going to put our stuffing in So now we've stuffed him, we just need to close that opening by stitching the top closed. And I use a baseball stitch to do this. So you want to fold in the two edges of the fleece and pin it together. And I do the middle first. Pass the needle on, tuck the little knot inside, and then to do your baseball stitch, you want to go in the one side, the long stitch, and in the other side. Now, don't worry too much about the stitching on this if you get a bit messy. Oh, it's always annoying when the thread gets caught like that. But your hat's going to come down to there anyway. Unless, of course, you choose not to have a hat. Then you might worry a bit more about your stitching. The fleece is also very forgiving, hides all your stitches really nicely. Now if you weren't going to do the scarf at this point I'd cast off my needle and thread but if you are, I mean the the hat sorry if you are going to do the hat then just leave that needle and thread still attached to your penguin because you're going to come back and use it later to sew on the hat next thing we need to do is we need to cut out the pieces for the little hat so again we're going to check for the pile which way the pile goes and I'm pretty sure the pile is going down that way and we're going to mark from the back so that's the bottom and we're gonna mark out one side of the hat and then double it for that. And then we're also going to cut out this like band on the edge of the hat. And we're gonna need two of those.
Then we need to sew along these two seams, just on the edges and then all the way around the hat. And then once you've sewn those seams, you want to flip the hat so it's the right way out and keep the band the wrong way out so that the right side is on the inside still, just like you sewed it. And then you want to stitch the band to the hat like this all the way around. So we're going to stitch along this seam here and I'm going to use a zigzag. You want to stitch all the way around and then when we flip it, you'll have the right side of the hat band against the right side of the hat. And I've cut this with a seam allowance, as you can see, there's the pattern piece. I've cut it really quite wide. So that then in a minute, I can decide how wide I want to have my hat band. Now you could choose that before you cut the pattern piece, it's up to you, but I like to have that flexibility that I can choose after when I've placed it on the penguin and I can see exactly how it lies and how it looks aesthetically. So I've sewn that all the way round and I've just had a little look and I think I quite like that width. I quite like the thick width. So I'm just going to go with a rotary cutter and square that off so it's really nice and neat. And then you can just flip the edge up. And I think I'm just going to leave that raw. But if you were using a fine knit like this penguin, he's got like a little jumper um, used for his hat. So I've just folded that under and stitched that as I went. You can also double it over as you cut it so that you can then sew the double thickness to the main bit of the hat so that you've already got that fold on there. You've already got that hidden kind of seam. So there's my hat and now we're going to attach it to the penguin. So we're going to pop it on our penguin. So I've placed my hat onto my penguin and I'm just going to, using that needle and thread, I'm just going to secure it in a couple of stitches each side just to make sure that the hat can't come off. I've also decided that I'm going to fold over the edge of that fleece just to make it look a bit neater. So I'm going to do some hidden stitches to keep that down as well. Now he's ready for his scarf and for his pom-pom. So I'm just going to sew the pom-pom on and I'm going to use red thread so that it hides into the fleece hat. So now we just need to make the scarf as the last thing. And all we're gonna do is cut out the pattern out of our star fabric so it matches the hat, although you could of course do contrasting, totally up to you. So I'm just gonna cut that out and then we're gonna wrap it round. And I'm gonna cut it the way that the stretch goes so that the stretch is going around him so that it's got a bit more give and is a bit more squidgy.
So then we just need to wrap it around the penguin. Like so, and I'm just gonna do a couple of hand stitches just to keep that in place, especially if you're giving this to a little one so that it doesn't come off. And you could, of course, make this double if you wanted to, if you didn't like that raw edge. And on the other one, as you can see, I've added some bells and I've just done it slightly differently. I've done it with a knitted fabric. As you can see, it's got a really small, fine knit and it's doubled over. So it's the same thickness. It's just folded in half and stitched just so that it gives it a bit more stability being that fine knit so that it won't unravel. And then I've stitched it down again because it's quite thin. It's a little bit kind of wants to go in its own way. So it needs to be contained. So it's just got a few stitches in the actual knot to the penguin and then underneath to keep that top bit down. And as I say, I've added these little bells to the bottom. Now on this one, instead of the bells, I'm just gonna cut with my scissors to give it a kind of tasseled look, I guess, like the end of a scarf sometimes is. And there he is, he's all finished. I hope you've really enjoyed making your little penguin and don't forget to stay watching because you're gonna see a sneak peek of who we're gonna be making next week. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial this week. And as promised, here's a sneaky peek of what we're gonna be making next week. He's our little polar bear. And as usual, all the links to the patterns and everything will be provided. And he's made out of the same fleece that we made the penguin out of, so you can use some of that that you have left over. Don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified when he's coming out, so that you can make your very own. Until next week, bye-bye.